like to introduce myself. I'm Jamie, and as Brent has already told you, I'm here to do my interview drive. I'm hoping to join the Wild Earth team. I don't have the same level of experience as some of the other presenters, but I'm hoping to bring something fresh and new, and hopefully to learn from some of these amazing guys, because they've, it's been an incredible morning so far. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, spectacular sighting of the leopard, Tangata, a uh, nice big dominant male, and then a sort of very rapid drive to see the Stig Pride, which was an also a very special sighting with a very serene family scene with nice new cubs. So we're just going to make our way around a little bit, but before we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Johannesburg, and I grew up visiting the bush and loving the University, studied law, decided it really wasn't for me, and that I wanted to come back and enjoy the bush again. So I hope you enjoy having me. Please be kind to me, guys. I'm new, don't know the roads, don't know the reserve, don't know the animals, but hopefully I can give you a good drive. Let's hit the road and see what we can find. I think what we're going to do is slowly make our way around. Oh, we've got a nice herd of zebra coming down to drink. which you'll often see with animals. What you'll often see with animals coming down to drink is they can actually take a very long time in approaching a dam. And that's for a very clear reason. Um, they need to make sure that there's no predators about. As you saw when we first approached that lion pride, they were also hanging out around the dam waiting to see what was coming down to drink. So you'll see that they approach very, very cautiously, often using as much cover as possible and walking into the wind so they can smell of what's around them. Yeah, we've got a nice, brave starter. What they'll also do is be very cautious when they approach, just in case there's a crocodile lurking in the depths of the water. The rest of the herd is feeling a little bit cautious, but we've got two brave drinkers. Here we go. <laughs> So typically a herd like this, the family structure would usually be the dominant stallion and his group of mares that he's selected. So when a young stallion is starting out in life and he wants to collect his females, he'll go and fight another stallion. And if that stallion loses, then they'll pass on either the daughter or his least favorite mare. And I read a very interesting article recently that the females obviously have a hierarchy. So the newest female, will be the one that is lowest ranking in the herd. And often the existing females, when a new female can, comes into the herd, can be very unfriendly and antisocial for a while. And that female must walk at the back and learn to learn her place until she's accepted by the herd. And often when you see zebras with stumpy tails, missing tails, that, I always used to think when I was a child that that was from a sort of surviving zebra that had escaped from a lion or a hyena hunt. But actually, typically, that's, that comes from the zebras biting each other, combination of teeth and kicking. 
and they have some very impressive incisors that they use to bite. So since you guys are new to me, um, I want to test a little bit on your knowledge from some of the existing viewers. Please can you ask, answer this question for me? How do you tell the difference between a male and a female zebra? Okay, it's one of the more tricky ones to do. And you can send through your answers either on questions at wildearth.tv or tweet us and hashtag safari live.